from Louisville, WDRB News at 10 starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Tamara Evans. The Marion County Sheriff's deputy who was murdered early Wednesday morning has been laid to rest. All right, thanks guys. And as Pat and Tom just said, the celebration in Lexington did turn chaotic last night. I really don't think you could have asked for a better day outside. Some had surgeries yesterday and spent today recovering, but friends and family tell me they are so thankful just to be alive. And then of course there's the fashion. Some celebrities say it does take a while to figure out what to wear to the Kentucky Derby. And road crews here in Jackson County have been especially busy today to say the least. You can see this section of road here along Highway 50 is pretty clear, but not all the roads look like this at this point. And there has been a lot going on today in basketball Definitely. with UofL, UK, Indiana, and Murray State playing right. an NCAA tournament. And we just checked with hospital officials. They now tell us that Marvin Fisher, the other man injured in the shooting, has now been upgraded to stable condition. Well, this story is just crazy. A week from today, one man will attempt to cross a tightrope over Niagara Falls. Indianapolis police are still trying to figure out what led up to a workplace shooting that left one man dead yesterday. The home ended up in a nearby field, but this is where it started. The family was actually hiding together in a bathroom, but they were in the path of the tornado. Authorities believe they found the remains of a southern Indiana teenager missing since September. WDRB's Lawrence Smith explains there are still many unanswered questions in this case. Lawrence, you know who we could hear across the entire building during that <laughs> IU game, don't you? That would be Bennett Haverly who was in the house. Cool. Right? He was there, but also Mr. Jeremy Kappel oh, over there. Tis the season for giving, but one nonprofit agency says they're facing a major shortage this holiday season. The Home of the Innocents is making an end of the year push for help so they don't have to turn away kids in need. President Barack Obama is spending this Veterans Day paying tribute to American heroes. The president laid a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknowns at Arlington National Cemetery. He says that tradition is intended, quote, to remember every service member who has ever worn our nation's uniform. The proud nation expresses our gratitude, but we do so mindful that no ceremony or parade, no hug or handshake is enough to truly honor that service. President Obama also says that the country must commit every day to serving veterans as well as they've served us. At least one person is displaced after firefighters respond to a Jeffersonville apartment complex. They were called to the French Quarter Apartments around 745 tonight. We're told people had to be evacuated and that the fire appears to have started in the bedroom of one apartment. That person will be displaced due to the damage. Firefighters also say smoke traveled through the apartment building, but they hope to have all the residents back in this evening. All the occupants got out. Uh, there was an alarm system. Uh, everybody got out safely. Uh, we had one firefighter that uh, took in some smoke, and he's going to, uh, to Clark County to get checked out. And firefighters say they are still investigating the cause of the fire. We saw some rain today, but we were also dealing with temperatures that were above normal. Jeremy Kappel lets us know if it's going to stay that way for the rest of the weekend. Well, it is hard to believe, but text messaging has been around for 20 years. British engineer Neil Papworth was just 22 years old when he sent the first ever SMS or short messaging service from his computer to a friend's cell phone. That was on December 3rd, 1992. Two decades ago, Papworth says he didn't realize it would catch on. A 20 year old man is accused of plotting a mass shooting at a showing of the latest Twilight movie and at a Walmart. Police in Missouri say Blake Lammers confessed to the plot after officers were tipped off by his mother. Investigators say Lammers told them he purchased tickets to a Sunday screening of Breaking Dawn Part 2. But then officers claim Lammers planned to shoot up a Walmart so that if he ran out of ammo, he could get more at the store. He faces several charges, including making a terrorist threat and attempted first degree assault. Well, Twilight fans at a premiere in North Carolina got quite a scare during a screening of the movie. Moviegoers heard a loud commotion coming from the back of the theater. It triggered flashbacks from the Aurora, Colorado shootings over the summer. Alexandria McCall and her friends saw a group of men yelling and bolted for the back exit. I sprinted. I sprinted out of there. I just didn't want any part of what was going on. And on their way out, they saw a smoking van smashed up against a tree outside the theater. Nearby, other cars had been smashed. Police say the man driving the van was the same man causing a scene inside of that theater. Well, investigators are learning more about what caused a deadly train accident that crashed into a parade float carrying wounded veterans. Federal officials say the warning signals at a railroad crossing were activated seven seconds before the float crossed the tracks. 
Four veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan were killed Thursday when a freight train slammed into the parade float. 16 others were hurt. The National Transportation Safety Board says the train sounded its horn nine seconds before it hit the float and used the emergency brake. Another Saturday in college football. You gotta love it. It's football season. Love fall. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Pat. All right. Well, a woman who got rowdy the night UK defeated Louisville in the final four basketball game will avoid jail time. Here's a look at the scene. You may remember that night where celebrating fans went wild. 23 year old Letha Burton was on trial for charges of alcohol intoxication and disorderly conduct. She was accused of throwing a beer bottle at Lexington police officers and refusing to leave an area near UK's campus. Burton will pay a $500 fine. Her case was the only district court trial among 91 other cases stemming from celebrations that night.